Welcome to my updated leveling build guide for melee rogue in Diablo 4. This one is all poison, no ultimate. Bear with me please because I'll explain everything to you in this video. It's more economical in my humble opinion on how I spend the talent, point, talent points in this build. I will talk to you in the second half of the video about some of the gear pieces and how I've basically augmented some key abilities. It is still a flurry build and it is all all poison i'm a big fan of it it works much better than death trap one in my humble opinion and yeah it's a lot more efficient a lot more all-in-one build that works great on aoe and it works great on bosses with a few things that maybe it doesn't do as well as death trap does but it's pretty damn good let's go through this my friends all right so here is the build. I am still staying with Puncture to generate energy and to spread vulnerability by taking Fundamental Puncture and throwing three blades in a spread. I think that's pretty standard for all of the melee rogues who are trying different builds perhaps, but this first bit I think we all kinda united on and we all agree on. I still believe, still believe that Puncture, that, um, puncture is good, but uh, Flurry is still vastly, vastly better than Twisting Blades and yes, I heard my comment and I agree that perhaps at the current in the current state of the game it doesn't scale as well maybe as twisting blades in the in the end game but with the augmentations with the things that allow you to hit everything around you and with um, uh, with such things as siphoning strikes that heal you for maximum life when you critically strike close enemies and generally from the description of flurry that you can see here when we hit the vulnerable or controlled enemy we are here a little bit for maximum life so this built-in heal into flurry is exactly the all-in-one ability that still is absolutely freaking amazing freaking amazing so i i do not even see anything that can compete with flurry for a rogue right now so that's the first call out here straight away while we're here you can see that i took sturdy obviously for close damage reduction we need it and i just showed to you siphoning strikes that also heal me when i critically strike close enemies which happens often enough i'm not gonna say that it's optimized super build yet but um it definitely is headed in the right direction over here in the defensives i only took one rank of dash because I'm not doing damage with dash, cooldown reduction by a little bit, a little bit, a little bit there is not worth the points in my humble opinion. And one dash, basically, uh, one level of dash is sufficient. I've taken passives here, as you can imagine. I've taken rugged damage reduction against overtime effects. Thank you very much. And most importantly, reactive defense that gives almost 20% damage reduction when you are knocked down and that happens all the time. And that is, guess what, when most melee rogues die. All right, now we're going to slightly more exciting part of this little guide. You can see that I went all out on Poison Trap. Poison Trap does a ton of poison damage. And I augmented it going towards C countering poison, poison trap that also has a chance to reset the imbuement skill cooldowns which happens relatively often that's a nice cherry on the cake now why poison trap and why not death trap we are going to talk about it very very shortly i promise when i tell you why i didn't take a uh, uh, ultimate yeah you will say what jero just wait mate just wait for the Tank tankiness and the speed increase, both sort of utility, you can say it for yourself, for your own needs, like convenience of life, and as well as, um, d well, defensive layers. I am boosting Duck Shroud, and as you can see, I'm level 45. I'm planning to put more points into this. Well, one more point left here at the very least. Definitely. Damage reduction. Increase of speed as you're running around. Do I need to say more? It's awesome. You don't even particularly need a horse. I'll, I'll even go as far as saying that. You don't even particularly need a horse, man. All right. Uh, it is obviously a poison imbuement. Need I say more? We're going all out on poison. Lucky hit. Poison imbued skills have up to 30% chance to apply double damage, double poison here, which is the mixed poison imbuement um, that I took. I am taking also um, increasing poisoning damage and i'm taking debilitating toxins so that uh, the enemies deal less damage extra points that i will have to spend uh, in this leveling process will go into alchemical advantage to increase also attack speed for each poisoned enemy which is up to 15 percent very easy to reach as well now 
Main question, main question of the moment is why Gyro didn't you take any ultimates? There are two reasons, my friends, and I will put it very bluntly to you. And if you like my reasoning, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. And if you don't like my reasoning, please be constructive and tell me in the comments down below what am I missing. First reason, rogue ultimates suck. That's the first reason. Very constructive, isn't it? I think they suck, and I know that previously I promoted Death Trap. Of course, I am saying it tongue-in-cheek, and of course Death Trap doesn't suck, suck per se. But if we're going all poison, I'm not boosting shadow damage anyway in my build. It kind of, first of all, doesn't make sense taking Death Trap. Secondly, I am trying to simplify all my builds, always, whatever I play. World of Warcraft for a very long time, previous Diablo builds, uh, Diablo franchises. I try to simplify. For beginners, for myself, I don't want an extra button. So if I took Death Trap, yes, it pulls the enemies in if you take all this kind of stuff. But it costs you three extra points here, right? Three extra points. While my Poison Trap does fine, it, the only thing it doesn't do, it doesn't pull enemies in. Also, Death Trap is relatively useless, bear with me, it's relatively useless comparing it to Poison Trap on bosses. Bosses move out of Death Trap. Bosses, uh, you need to dance around bosses. Uh, positioning and standing still, and for the boss to stand still, it's much, much harder to set up an effective and efficient Death Trap on bosses. While Poison Trap, yeah, it requires a little bit of skill and positioning, it has an activation moment, but at the same time, it is a damage ticking. While you can continue running around, it is damage ticking. It's freaking fantastic. The Shadow Clone, I know people pick Shadow Clone for other rogue builds, like, so here, theoretically, I could have taken Shadow Clone for Poison, yes, for them to start mimicking my actions and all that kind of stuff that you can see on the screen, but here is where we get to point number two, my friends. Take a look at this. We have only primary, secondary, and four extra slots of skills on the, on the, mm, here, on uh, your action bar. Now, if we take a look, at the rows, if I took ultimates, that would be a fifth choice. That would be a fifth choice. You can see where this is going. This is going where, what's the bloody point, Blizzard, to, to design your system in such a way that if I even wanted an ultimate and I was attracted to one of them, say Shadow Clone, I simply do not have a convenient slot to put it in. I cannot, I cannot keybind it conveniently and nicely to any of these things. That's another thing. My previously advertised kind of mixed shadow and poison build with both death trap and with a bit of a poison trap. I was before the boss, I was swapping a skill. Do you really want to do it? I don't think that it's particularly conducive to nice and smooth gameplay. So that's another reason why I simply didn't take it. I don't want this fifth choice. And I honestly don't see how it would help my particular build, this build. That's my reasoning. I'll shut up in a second. But tell me in the comments down below right now if you actually agree with this. Perhaps it's a new, fresh perspective. But let me know if this resonates with you. If it makes you maybe scratch your head a little bit and like, yeah, Gyro is actually onto something here, perhaps. Now, that's all clear, right? Now we're going to go into my gear and augmentations of gear with our favorite person in the village, Occultist, who is going to change our abilities a little bit. Well, first of all, the immediate honorable, not honorable, immediate primary mention here goes to our awesome Flurry augmentation, where we are imprinting this uh, awesome aspect which is going to let our flurry damage enemies in a circle. I spoke about this in the first video where I was promoting flurry over twisting blades. I, I'm still a very much a convert into this into this faith of flurry over the twisting blades. I think it's vastly better, vastly, vastly better. So that's your first point. Point number one in this build, very, very critical. Second thing that makes it all tick and suddenly comes together even without the freaking ultimate is this is the when the on the lucky hit critical critical strikes with poison imbued skills have a 10% chance to create a toxic pool that deals quite a lot of poisoning damage over 3 seconds and while you're standing in the pool your poison imbuement skills have no cooldown and no charge limit 
Now you tell me how awesome is that? That procs all the time, I can tell you, because you f you hit very fast. Don't forget that you hit very fast. You don't need an amazingly high critical strike chance for this stuff to become effective. That is where the heals are happening all the time. That's where these pools are spawned all the time. It is just beautiful. There is some, as you can see, it's not an optimized build yet. It's an end of leveling cycle, I suppose. So some of these things I can see are disabled simply because they're superseded by the other more powerful ones. That's when certain augmentation turns gray in case you're new to this. Uh, so I am going to be uh, um, updating this further and I absolutely am going to check in with you again on once I'm deeper into end game on this build. 100%. 100%. And I will be, by the way, before you ask me, of course I'll be doing the same thing for other characters, except for so far, I had limited amount of time to play, and I am focusing on my rogue. What else? Well, Poison Trap, not breaking stealth, so anything that is uh, kind of helpful, I'm sort of accumulating right now the powers, but at the same time, it is a little bit probably that's where I'm going to stop. There are two main things here to pay attention to, the flurry, the circular flurry and these poison pools. Beyond that, I have a few other helpful abilities and uh, such as maybe I'll only mention this one. I have the ability to gain my primary resource for every 25% of life that I heal. I heal all the time and it also trickles in, not massively, but trickles in towards my primary resource, which means that I'm not running out of energy too much. Yeah. And while you, uh, before you ask me, what else do I have? I am actually going with combo points. I love that combo points are increasing the number of strikes or the attack speed, whatever whatever is applicable to the ability. I know that some people are suggesting inner sight. I do not agree with that because in practice, inner sight makes you like. There are two things, two problems with inner sight. There are two problems with inner sight. Um, the problem, the first problem, is the fact that you have to then hunt that particular marked enemy all the time, which may not be exactly where you want to go or what you want to do. And sometimes you want to skip even, you want to even continue going and ignore certain enemies. But that particular enemy you want to ignore might be marked with inner sight. So that's the first thing. It's inconvenience purely. And secondly, you kill one enemy, you kill another enemy, you kill another enemy. Then the bar fills up. And you only have that unlimited energy for 4 seconds. It's a very narrow window that is almost never, almost never perfectly aligned with when you need that energy. If inner sight worked in a way that it fills up a bar and then perhaps there is an activation hotkey maybe of some sort that allows us to activate this when we want to. Kind of like charge up and then choose when you're going to enter that four seconds of unlimited energy state. Then I take it. Then I take it. But it's not. It sucks. It sucks. Preparation. I'm not even going to talk about this because this build does not have an ultimate skill. Maybe when you have an ultimate skill and especially if you're playing a class, perhaps, um, you know, a build, I suppose, that relies heavily on that skill. Let's say uh, your Reign of Arrows, maybe skill, maybe rogue build. That's when it becomes a little bit more useful, but not for this particular build. That's it, my friends. I've been kind of excitedly shouting at you here for probably 10 minutes or so. I haven't been keeping an eye on the time. Please give the video a like. It goes a long way. Come back for more. This build Build will evolve, new builds will come your way. I welcome new people, Diablo players who come into my community. I encourage my World of Warcraft community to stay open to speaking metaphorically, eating different food on different days. Don't just munch on the same stale sandwich that currently, sadly, World of Warcraft is a little bit. They're doing well. They're doing well. I'm still playing WoW a little bit in the background. The new uh, Wing of LFR just came out at the moment of publishing of this video, That this and that. So I'm definitely still uh, playing and interested in both games. But Diablo is where it's at. Don't miss out. Thanks for watching. Jairo out.